For this week, we have chapter two, and we're gonna talk about logic. And here you go. So what is logic? Logic is, um, instrument for analysis of reasoning, whose object is to distinguish good or valid reasoning from bad and invalid reasoning. So, um, so logic is something which could be true or false, good or bad, valid to invalid, okay? So we're gonna talk about statement. Um, we consider a collection of supportive statements. So we're gonna talk about statements. So we're gonna have statements. And now the statement, it's like just one sentence. Okay, and the statement, um, uh, a statement is true. So we're gonna assume that statement is true. Uh, and then we're gonna do some operations with, set, with uh, statements, okay? So we're gonna have, gonna dip more into the uh, statements. So we're gonna talk about statements first, and then we're gonna do some operations with statements, which are gonna be the, uh, we're gonna be involve the true tables, okay? So what is statement and logic, logical connectivities? So statement is, uh, so this chapter two is similar like chapter one. In chapter one, we talk about set, another set, and operation with sets. Here, the similarities, we're gonna talk about statement, we're gonna have another statement and you're gonna have operation with statements, which are the logics, state connectivities, okay? So statement is just sentence, which declares something, okay? And the statement is important, um, cannot be open to interpretation, can be true or false. For example, uh, so this is example of a compound statement. If it rains, the ground gets wet. Because you have kind of if and then, okay? Uh, so this is an example of a compound statement. Simple statement is, could be, for example, it's sunny outside, or it's beautiful, uh, no, it's sunny today, okay? So it's an ISA statement. Now, if it's true or false, depends, but it could be true or it could be false, okay? Not kind of interpretation. Like if I say, I like, uh, I like blue. Okay, that's my statement, right? Um, so it's a simple statement. And another example is all children like cookies, okay? So these are examples of statements. So statement is something we declare. It's a sentence which declares something, okay? Uh, example of statement, simple. So there are two types of statements. They are simple, sorry, let me use that. They're simple statements or they're compound statements. The simple when they have a single idea. So think about in grammar. When you have only one idea, it's a simple statement. Some people hate milk. It's only one idea, right? Uh, if you have more than one idea, then it should look something like boys like cars and girls like dolls. So here we have two ideas. One is boy, boys like cars and girls like dolls is the second idea. There are two ideas and they're connected with and, right? So the words which tells you that you have a compound statement, the words you're using usually and or um, usually it's if and then, okay? And uh, we got, or also, uh, we're gonna talk about, this is kind of the connection between simple statements to make compound statements, okay? We're gonna talk about a few more, okay? You're gonna see them later, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, so now statement is associated with the capital letter. So how we represent the statement in a logical uh, expression? 
we are using capital letter, the same way like set. If you have a set, you're using letter A for set A, set B. Remember, that's the name of the set. So, uh, for example, if you have a triangle, it's a four-sided polygon, which is not true statement, but doesn't matter. This is statement which says something, right? So, a triangle is a four-sided polygon. That's the statement. And let's say this is statement A, right? Now, the letter T and the letter F were not used, should be avoid uh, to, um, to, to name the statements because T and F we're using for true and false. Because when you have a statement, we're going to talk about logic. We're going to talk about is it true or false. So every statement could be true or could be false, right? So that's why using the letter T and the letter F to represent is that statement is a true or false. Okay, make sense? And here, when you have more than one statement, simple statements, we're going to use the logical connectivities. And logical connectivities, these are the words we join the simple statements one to another. And I told you already, you have not, uh, and, or, if, then. So these are the... Uh, uh, these are the words which connect statements, simple statements to make a compound statement. Make sense? What do they mean by I have no grammatical purpose? You, you, yeah, what do they mean? Uh, because um, this is just the connection, nothing else. Okay? These are the connections we're going to look for to connect the statements. But those are only for compound statements or? Yes. It could be, yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, it says simple statements to one another. Yeah, when you have simple statements, if you put these words between them, you can make a compound statement. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so now, these are the, we're going to go one by one by connectivities. Uh, all the connections we talk about, not, and, or, and all that. So the first one is not. Okay. And not means negation, which means make it negative, make it opposite of it. And this is the symbol we're using, okay? Which is uh, before one, tilde, okay? And the statement and its negation have uh, half opposite truth. So if, so if the original uh, statement is girl like dolls, that's the statement A, see, girls like dolls, not A is going to say it's not the case, usually that's what you're using, it is not the case that girls like dolls, or you can just say the girls do not like dolls. That's the opposite of the statement A. Make sense? So making opposite of statement. So if I say it's sunny outside, what is the negative? The not, not the negative of that statement. If it's sunny outside, what is the? It opposite? is not. It is not sunny it, outside. It is not sunny outside. That's right. So that's the opposite. That's the negative negation. Okay. Uh, the next uh, con logical connectivity is and which is also a call conjunction, and this is the symbol you're using. Now, the relation we have with, um, with sets, um, so here we have, we're using this A and B. So when you connect two statements with and, you're gonna put A and B, and this is the symbol. So this is something similar like the interception for sets, okay? But this is kind of uh, like more pointed. And this symbol is if you press shift and six, you're going to see that symbol. Okay. So this statement is true only if both statements are true, if both individual statements are true. Okay. And here you have example, girls like dolls is one of the statements. Statement B, the second one is dolls have long hairs. And... Uh, Statement A and B is going to be girls like dolls and dolls have long hair. Now, 
Later on, we're going to talk about uh, truth tables, and you're going to see how exactly to know when it's true, when it's false. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, so don't worry. This is not complicated. We're just going to follow truth tables. So there are truth tables. But do you remember, the end is true only if both statements are true. Okay. So it's something like if you have set a. I'm just going to give you uh, an analogy here for if I have statement, I mean, set A. And I'm going to use one, two, and three. This is what we did last week, right? And set B is five, two, and seven. Now, what is A interception of B? What they have in common, right, is going to be two. Okay, so it's something like interception. What they have in common for sets and for logic, it's true if both individual statements are true. Make sense? You got it? So it's kind of similar. Okay? You got it. Okay, and the next operation is OR. And OR operation is disjunction is the name, and this is the symbol you're using, which is like a lowercase v. Okay, or you can use it in the symbols. Actually, you can use it in the symbols um, uh, file I attach. I'll show you why it is. Okay, so this is the symbol, and this is similar like union with sets. Okay. So if I have set A and set B, the connection between them is going to be OR. So this is the example. John likes apples, and uh, the statement B says, Anne likes pears. So A or B is going to be John likes apples, or that's the connection you're going to use, Anne likes pears. And this statement is true if one or both statements are true. So that means you include everything. If one is true, it's true. If both are true, it's true. Make sense? So it's something like union of two sets. Similar operation, but here we're talking about statements, not sets. Okay? Got it? Then the next connectivity, logical connectivity, it's if, then. If something, then, and it's called implication, and this is the symbol we're going to use. Sometimes they use like intercept, like a subset, but this is the one you're going to use, okay? Um, so this statement is, uh, this is how you write it, A, if, then, B, and this is what it means. So you have the statement A says it is raining. And the statement B says, it is not sunny. So uh, the connectivity here is going to be um, A, if then B. And the statement is going to, the compound statement now is going to be, if it is raining, then it is not sunny. Okay. And this statement is false only if A is true and B is false. And don't don't worry, you don't have to remember this, we have the truth tables. In a minute, we're gonna look at the truth tables and it's really, it's really easy to, to work with it, okay? So just remember, this is the connectivity, the connection between two statements, okay? And then we have two more, I mean, one more. The next one is if and only if. This is the oper the connection the connection or operation between two statements, and it's also ca uh, called biconditional. And this is the symbol we're using, like error with two points going two ways. Okay, uh, and this is the example. If the statement A says it is sunny, and the statement says B says the sun is out, uh, then A if and only if B is going to be 
it is sunny if and only if if it if the sun is out. Okay? Make sense? Okay, so now Uh, here, obviously, you can have many logical connectivity. You can just connect. You can make more complicated statements, right? You can uh, get one or two or three or five or what depends how many simple statements you want to get. And you can make uh, compound, big compound statements, okay? So this is how it's going to look. So you have uh, this example. John likes pears and apples or oranges. So this is given, this is your compound statement. So this compound statement, you're gonna break it down to simple statements. You're gonna say, what is your statement A? What is your statement B or G or whatever it is? And you're gonna make a, like a equation. So this in the bottom is like equation, which give you the connection between the, the simple statements to make that compound statement you have given. Make sense? So here, this is how you break it down to Compound. First, you're going to see what are the connectivities. We have and and you have or. Okay, so John likes pairs is going to be one of the state simple statements, right? So that's statement A. Also, you can say John likes apple. So that's your statement. They name it P. That's another simple statement. And because John is the main character here, that's why all the simple statements include John. And then uh, also the other one is John likes grapes. They name it G. Okay. So these are the three simple statements included in this compound statement. Make sense? So when you write the simple statements, make sure you have like, uh, like usually, you know, in grammar, what you have in, in, in statement. In, in simple statement, what you have? You have action, what else? Who is doing the action, right? And what is action, yes? So you have these three things. Subject and, then, and verb. Yeah, Thanks. John has weird taste. Well. <laughs> he likes pears and apples or grapes. Like, you know, like you can't, I don't know, yeah. Okay, we're not judging here, okay? <laughs> Honestly, it's it's easier with words than it is with numbers for me. So it's... Okay, okay, so that's better, right? Okay, so have the statement A, statement P, statement G. These are the three simple statements. And we're going to make it A. I mean, first you're going to have the um, A is going to be P and A. I think it should be A and P, but doesn't matter operation between those two and then because of the comma here that's why it's in parentheses you're gonna do or g make sense so that's how you do your this is kind of translation between the sentence in english translate to logic in math okay make sense Yes, ma'am. So anytime we we see a comma, we should use uh, parentheses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the truth tables <clears throat> for all these operations we talk about. Uh, I told you about the um, they they uh, they have so the truth table they contains all possible truth value of the statements involved, and they help us to make it clear. If you have compound statement, is it true or false? Okay, so the compound statement also could be true or also could be false. Depends from the simple sta simple statements we have and also the connection between them. Okay, and um, the true table is going to involve all the possible uh, statements, simple statements involved, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So these are the basic truth tables for not, for and, and for uh, or. And <clears throat> this is the rule. If I have, so not, <clears throat> you can make not only one statement, right? 
So if I say only one simple statement, so I can say uh, it's sunny and you can do opposite of it. So you're doing opposite of only one statement. That's why you have statement A could be true or false, right? So this is the value for the statement A, which could be true or false. Now, if it's true, this is the value for the not A. This is how you read it. So statement A has only, only these two possible cases, right? Only two possible value. The statement A can be true or can be false. That's all. And then if it's true, not A is going to be false. And if it's false, not A is going to be true. So it's do, you're doing opposite. Make sense? Okay, the next operation is AND. Now, when you do AND, you have to have two statements. That's why you have statement A and statement B. Minimum, you connect AND, only minimum of two statements, right? So, I mean, that's the only pass, you connect only two statements. So, if you have A and B, these are all possible outcomes for A, if you have two. You can have both of those true. You can have the first true, the second false. Or you can have the first false, the second true, or both of those false. So this uh, this is like a in general when you have two statements involved, this is the true table you're gonna start with always. If there are two statements, these are the possible outcomes. Okay, you have two statements. Now, what is A and B? Remember, it says it's true only if both of those are true, right? So if you have true and true, then the answer is true. If one of them is false, everything else is false, right? Okay, so using this true table, we can easily find the solution, find the, uh, the logically think about what is going to be uh, the, the, the compound statement. Is it going to be true or false? Make sense? Okay, I see thumbs up. Thank you. Now, the next one is operation is OR. And again, we have OR is the connection between two statements. So we have uh, statement A, statement B, these are all possible outcomes. If you are two on this, are only possible. And this is true if both or one of them is true. So if you have at least one true, the answer is true. If you have no true, if you have false, false, the answer is false. And everything else is true because, because you have at least one true, make it true. Make sense? So that's how, I mean, you don't have to memorize this because you, I make a like a formula sheet for this true table. So you have them in a different file or you can look at the PowerPoints and you can just see if I have true, true, what is my answer if it's or, okay? And then you have another example here when you have a little more complicated question. So in here you have three statements. So you have A, B, and C. So let's look at this example. So we have a uh, Cheryl uh, is 20 or Cheryl likes chocolate and I like cherries. So these are the three, these are the three simple statements. A, Cheryl is 20. B, Cheryl likes chocolate and C, I like cherries. See here it's not cherry, it's I like cherries. Okay, so uh, what you have, you have the union between the A and B and also you have the interception of C with C or the, I'm sorry, you have OR with A and B and AND with C. And now when you have three statements involved, you have A, B and C, we're going to do, this is the table you're going to start with always. It's like a standard table you start with. Because the combination between A, B, and C, they can be all true. They can be two true and one false, or two false and one true, and all of those false. So these are all the possible combinations. And then you're going to do A or B. So I'm going to look at A or B only, only these two columns. And I'm going to see if A and B is true. Both of those are true, then the answer is two. See, these are true, the answer is true. This both of those are true. Or we're doing or, I'm sorry. We're doing or. So you need to have at least one, right? 
So you need to have at least one to be true. So only the last two are gonna be false. Everybody understand that? If you have true, it's true. That's all. Okay? And then after that, so you get this column here for A or B. And then you're gonna do A or B, whatever you have in this column. So I'm gonna look now at this column and also C. I'm gonna look at those two columns now. And looking at those two columns, you're gonna do the operation is and. And means if both of those are true, then it's false. So we have here these two are true. That's why it's true. And also we have this is also both true. And this is also both true. And everything else is false. So that's how we get the last column. And the last column give me what is the the true table for this is the true table for the compound statement. Make sense? I'm I'm still confused how you which have one? figured out which which is true and which is false. So is Cheryl is 20. Is that true or false? Uh, okay, now depends. That's why you're making this table to, to cover all the different cases. Okay, if Cheryl is 20, that means this is true. If this is true, see, if A, B, and C are true or false, then you have all these combinations. If, if Cheryl is 20, it's true, right? So that means for A, you're going to use only the case. So it's going to be one of those rows, right? Because if it's, if it's not true, if it's false, you're not going to use the bottom. So this true table give me the all possible combinations between if it's true or false, okay? You got it? So it's, if it's true, you're going to use these four. If cherry like chocolates, if it's true, you're going to use those two. If it's true, we don't know, but let's say assume it's true, right? And then I like cherries. If I like cherries is true, then this is going to be the, the case. So you, you narrow it down to only the first one. Okay. Now, if it's false, one of those, you're going to go through the different path. But this table here is going to give me all the possible combination if this is false or if this is true. Depends what it is. Okay. We have to, we, so we have to make this table ourselves and just yes. assume that you could possibly be like that first section of that statement, Cheryl is 20, or because it's an or, like it, yeah, okay, I see, I see, I see what you're saying. Yes. So technically, the, the simple statements A, B, and C, they can be true or false. We don't know that. But making this table guarantee that even if it's true or false, one of these doesn't matter, all of those, you can have option for all of those. These are all the possible combinations. Make sense? So if I know that Sherry is 20, and if I know that Sherry don't like chocolate, but I like cherries, I can find exactly what's going to be the conclusion for this compound statement. Make sense? Okay, Mario, say yes. Okay. So the truth table, Marcel, say yes. Uh, John says yes. Okay. Mark, okay. It looks like you got it. Justin is yes. Okay. So uh, this true table give me all the possible outcome. Thank you. So someone say yes. Okay. We're going to do more examples. We're going to practice this a little bit more. So now, um, so uh, we have here some terminology to go over. So etology means it's true under all conditions. That means the true table it's always true, no matter if the original statements are true or false. So that means the final column consists entirely of true results. So the way we just did the table before, 
if everything here, the last column is true, 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 then you're going to have tautology. Okay. An example of that is A or not A. So if you make a table for A or not A, the last one is going to be always true. Okay. The, the other one is contradiction is uh, when it's false all the way. So if the last co final column is only false, the final column, the way you just did it, if it's false, 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 the last column, then it's contradiction. And this is the example of it. A and not A. It's not possible to have A, something to be true, or, I mean, and also not true. It's kind of contradiction, right? Um, and uh, analog of uh, logical connectivities. Um, this is like... Um, the application way it's used, uh, it's uh, used at uh, computers or circuits uh, of, or transmissions of current. Okay, that's one of the applications. Um, so here we have another example. And here we have uh, conditionals contain two components. The first component is true. The second must be true. If the first is true, the second must be true. So this is like uh, uh, when you have Uh, the way to check if, if two true tables are the two, two statements are the same, it's the best way to do is when you do the true tables. So we're going to do that in a little bit. We're going to have uh, two different expressions, logical uh, connectivity. We're going to have two like logical functions or like uh, equations, and you're going to check them. You're going to check if they're the same. If the true table is the same, that means they're equals. Okay. Um, and here you have examples, you have biconditional, so this is the true table for, so this is pretty much going over the true table for if then and if and only if, so this is the true tables, you have those in the formula sheet also, okay, you have those in the formula sheet. And we're going to go over that. And here we have, um, this is why we're going to do, go over this example, equivalent statements. So we're going to have uh, two, um, two statements. So this is the one, not A or and B versus not A union not B. So we're going to check those two. And this is how you check them because you have only two letters, A and B. This is where you're going to start. You're going to start with only two letters, right? These are all possible cases between two statements, A and B. They can be both true. They can be one of those true or both of those false, right? So first, you're going to check the parentheses. You're going to do A, and this is A and B, right? So this is A and B, the column A and B. So A and B is true if both of those are true. So we're going to compare this and this is true. So that is true. And everything else is false because that's the true table for and. So that's how we get this column. Then after that, you're going to do not. So you're going to do the next column, which is not A and B. And not means you're going to switch the previous column. So from here, true, change to false. False, change to true. So not is just doing opposite. False become true. False become true. Okay? So that's how we get this is the true table, the end of the true table for the first statement, for this statement. Okay? Everybody understand that? And then after that, we're going to do the second statement. So first you're going to do not A. And this is the column for not A. So we're going to look at A only. 
see A is true, you're going to change it to false. And then A is true again, you're going to change it to false. Then false is going to change to true, and false is going to change to true. So that's how you do not A. Then you're going to do not B again, the same way, not B. Now we're going to look at the column B, and true become false, false become true, true become false, false become true. So switch it, change it. And then after that, you're going to do the operation OR. Now for this operation, for the last column, you're going to use those two columns. And when you do OR, if it's true, if you have at least one true, it's true. So here, the first one is false and false, that's why it's false because there is not true. Then the next one have one true, so the answer is true. The next one have one true also, so the answer is true. And here you have both of those are true, so it's true. So this here, this column in the end is your column for the statement not A or not B. So now compare this column for the first statement and the other column for the second statement, comparing those two columns, are they the same? They're the same, right? Yes. So they're the same statement. So that means these two statements are equals. Okay? So if they're the same, the, the first statement is equal to the second statement. So that's how you check equivalent statements. Make sense? Okay, then going to the another one, there's another example. And in this example, you have A, B, and C. So you have to do this one. And then you have to do this one. Okay. Uh, so here they one of the sites. So when you have three statements, A, B, and C, you start with this. This is like a standard. This is all possible combination between A, B, and C. And then you have you're gonna do A or B, which is the one here. And you're going to look only A and B. A or B is... Uh, hold on, this this is half a type pointing. Let's see. Um, a or B. So looking at A and B. Um, I think there's a typo here. Because or means if you have at least one true. So this should be, I can change it here, but this should be, so looking at A and B. So this should be true. This is true. This is also true. Because you have one true. A or B. Uh, this is also true. This is also true. This is true. This is false. This is false. Okay. So that's A or B. Then we have uh, A or C. This is the next one. This is also OR. So we're going to compare A and C. So we have A and C is true. That's good. Now this is also true because you have one true then true, and then true, and then true again. Now this is false, this is true, and the last one is false. Okay? So that's how it's A or C. And then you're gonna do AND between them. So you're gonna look at those two columns now, and you're gonna do AND. And it's AND if both of those are true. So both of those are true, yes. Both of those are true, both of those are true, both of everything is correct here, okay? So if both of those are true, then this is your, the true table for the left side. Make sense? 
and this is right. Okay, so that's how you do the first side. So this is the true table for the, the first side, and then you have to do the other one. Let's see if they have it, if not. Yeah, this is the second side. Okay, so this is the second one, which is A. Now we need to do this first. So we're doing the second side. We also have the ABC, the standard one, the same one. And then we have to do B and C. So B and, B and C, you're going to look only B and C. If it's both of those true, then it's true. Okay, this is correct. And then after that, we're going to do OR with A. So we're going to do A and this. So I'm going to look at those two, and if you have minimum at one, true is going to be true. And this is right, okay? So this is the statement for your other one. So both of those, so this, uh, this column and the column before, see, look at this, you have only the last three are false. And this one is the same way. So you have true, 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 and the last three are false. So this column and the last column here, they're the same. So that's why the two statements are logically equivalent because they have the same true tables. Make sense? How do you know which variation of table to use? How do you know if it's like, okay, it's a standard table. So I'm going to give you, if it's two, if you have A, B, you're going to use only uh, four combinations. If they're ABC, they're going to use eight combinations. It's standard. You always start with that. Is that the question you're asking? Or what do you mean, how you know which to use? No, no, that was it. Okay, yeah. So if there are two, var two simple statements, you're going to use four rows because that's the only four combination between A and B. Uh, if you remember from last week, we talked about two to the N, right? So if you have, so this is also formula to find how many columns you have, um, how, many, how many rows. So if you have two letters, A and B, so if you have A and B only letters, it's gonna be two square, which is four, possible combinations. If you have A, B, and C, there are three letters, so it's going to be two cube, which is eight rows. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot Got like, uh, like uh, ones and zeros. True, true and false. Yes, yes. And then counting by multiples like that, it's like the... the yeah. Yes. This can actually be implemented in electronic circuitry. There's actual uh, gates that use the ones and zeros in the same way as these truth tables. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Like I can make the connection between the two. Like. Yes. Yeah, like all the possible outcomes, all the possible subsets of set, power of set is the same formula. Uh, all the possible rows, all the possible combinations between two. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Yeah. And this is the formula two to the end. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. We're going to the next one. Why is not going to the next one? Okay, so here we have uh, equivalent statements. Um, so here we have some fundamental logical uh, equivalents. Uh, double negation, you know, in English, not, not, right? So here we have not, not A. Now, here we have only one set, uh, only one statement, which is A. Okay. And because using the formula two to the first is gonna be just two possible combinations, right? So A could be true or false. 
then we're going to do not a which is opposite so true become false false become true so you're changing them and then you have to do one more not so um the next column is going to be changing false to true true to false right so this is not not a okay so what you can say about a and not not a they're the same right So those two statements, they are the same. Everybody see that? Okay, another one, another fundamental logical equivalence is A if then B and not A or B. And this is the true table for those. Okay, so we have A uh, if then B, and using the table, uh, we have uh, it's false if the first one is true and the second one is false, right? So if you have the first one is true, the second one is false, then it's going to be false, everything else is true. So that's how you get. So the last column here is the first statement and then doing this statement we're going to do not a first which is switching a so true become false false become true and then doing or so when i do or i'm going to look at those two columns and i'm going to be it's going to be true if at have at least one true so you have one true here both of those are true and you have one true here so all of this is true and this is false, right? And now looking at those two columns, the last two, they have the same values, right? So that means those two logical statements, they're equivalent, okay? And this is the symbol we're using to represent logical equivalence. And this symbol is also included in your, in your formula sheet I put in a blackboard. Okay, so this is how you check if two statements are equivalent. You do the true table. This is another example. Uh, symbolic arguments are a series of statements that try to give support to a logical conclusion. Okay, uh, and here we have uh, we have some logical statements, like you know when in court. Everybody present their arguments and then the judge have to make a conclusion, right? Somebody is guilty or somebody is not guilty. Yes. You know what? So this is type of um, using uh, logical uh, symbolic arguments. So this is you have arguments. So for arguments, you have premise. We have the statements. And then conclusion is what is the final statement? Okay. And this is the symbol we're going to use. And this symbol is also for the conclusion. So conclusion use this symbol. And this symbol is also included in the formula sheet I have provided in week one. Okay, in the blackboard. Um, so if you need to determine if um, whatever the statement the argument is valid or not to make the conclusion, um, we're going to do that using a true table. Okay, uh, so what you're doing here, we're going to do a true table for the for the arguments. We're going to make the conclusion, the, the true table for the argument. You're going to make a, a true table for the conclusion. And if they're the same, then the what you're going to say, then you have a valid uh, conclusion. If not, it's not valid, invalid. Okay. And here we have example. I mean, here we have another way to do that. Is if you know the um, different laws. We have law of detachment, law of uh, contraposition. We have law of syllogism, and law of disjunctive syllogism. Okay, so these are the laws. Uh, and uh, you have example here. 
Uh, also, we're going to talk about there's an easy way to check if uh, to make a conclusion, make a this is the example, and we have example with using the laws. I want to show you example with uh, so with all our diagrams. Uh, so all our diagrams are similar like Venn diagrams. Uh, I want to show this. This is how they look like. So the, I want to show the our diagram. It's something you use also um, to make a conclusion of something. And um, so pretty much you're drawing a little circle. So all the statements you're gonna represent them with a little circle. So this is the example. All the children eat sushi. So everybody who eats sushi in this red circle, right? And this rectangular uh, box, it's all the children, right? I mean, this is the, all the possible. Uh, uh, like the unit universal sets, like universal setting sets, but here we're talking about statements. So all children eat sushi. James eats sushi, therefore, James is a child. Okay? So let's see, is that conclusion valid or invalid? So that's what is given. So let's draw the Euler diagram here. So, and the Euler diagram is going to be like this. <clears throat> the C represents sushi. I mean, C represents the, the children because the statement say all children eat sushi because uh, not only the child, the child, the children eat sushi. I mean, they're all the people who eat sushi. It's a bigger is going to include the children, right? Because that's what it says that all children eat sushi. So that's why the set, the, the circle for the children is going to be inside of the people who eat sushi. Make sense? Now, it says also that James eats sushi. Now, it says that James eats inside of the sushi circle, but we don't know if it's going to be inside of this. Is it here or here where it is, right? Could, there are two possible, two possible um, cases here. You can have James to be inside the children's circle or could be outside, okay? but we say that he James eats sushi, so he's not outside, he's not here, okay? He's not outside of the sushi circle, okay? So if you draw circles like this, it's easy to see if the conclusion we have that James is a child as the conclusion could be valid or not. In this case, it's invalid because James could be outside of the children, it's possible, okay? Any questions on that? And the way to prove that is you can do the Venn diagram, I'm sorry, the over diagram, or you can use the true tables. Okay, the dollar diagram is good enough. And then uh, for this chapter, what you need to know is we have simple and compound statements. We have the connection between a not and or if and only and if then. There should be one more. If and only if and also we have if and then. Um, and the truth tables, we're doing the truth tables to prove or to show uh, all the possible combinations between the statements. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you where they are on Blackboard, the, the formula sheet. And using the Euler diagram to determine uh, is it valid or invalid uh, conclusions. Okay. Can you so go over that last part one more time? I'm sorry? Can you go over the diagram part one more time? Yes. Uh, which one? This one? Very last diagram, uh, that one. Yes. Do you have question here? Say, can you go over it one more time? 
Oh, okay, I got it. Okay, so here I mean, we have just, given. We just needed yes. more context. More what? Context. Okay, like so there's here nowhere... we have. So here we have given. These are the arguments given. All children. These are the like. Uh, this is given, and this is the conclusion. Okay, and we need to check that is it valid conclusion or not. Make sense? So we have given all children eat sushi. That's one of the arguments, right? The other one is says James eat sushi. These are the two things, two statements given. Okay. So we're drawing the picture of this, and we have to determine if James is a child, it's a valid statement, or valid um. Uh, what is called? You have valid conclusion or not? So this is how you do it. First, you're gonna do all children eat sushi. So I'm gonna draw a circle of all the people who eat sushi, which is the S, the red one. Then the children circle is gonna be inside because it says all the children eat sushi. So the green circle is inside the red one. And then the conclusion is James is a child. Now. James is a child. James, the circle, the black circle could be inside the green or could be outside of the green or also could be outside of the red, right? It's not outside of the red because uh, it says James eats sushi, right? And <clears throat> could be one of those two, right? So the conclusion is James is a child. So they're saying that James is inside, but that's not, it's not, that's not valid. It's not, uh, that's not a true statement. This circle, James could be outside of the green circle. Make sense? So that's why it's invalid. It well, could be it out. Go. Yes, so it's, it's invalid. Out. So it's invalid because it can be in either in either place. Yes. Okay. Okay. Everybody understand that? Okay. So that were the powerpoints. Uh, now let me show you. Uh, I want to show you. Um, way to find on Blackboard. See if you open this week two true tables. You're going to have, this is the file. You're going to have all the true tables put together. So when you do your quiz, <clears throat> you have, uh, this is the operation. Let me write. So this is and, this is or. <clears throat> then you have if then is here. And then the last, Table hits if and only if. I didn't include not, but not is just switching it, right? True become false, false become true. Okay, so you can use this formula sheet for the quiz. Um, any questions? Okay, so that's the lecture for today.